Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson, where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 21.3, genetic modification. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 21.3, you need to describe and outline examples of genetic modification and for extended, outline the process of genetic modification using bacterial production of a human protein as an example and discuss a advantages and disadvantages of genetically modifying crops. Now before we begin, if you're interested in using the slides you see in my videos adapted for the classroom, you can find a link to my resource store in the description. So genetic modification can be defined as changing the genetic material of an organism by removing, changing or inserting individual genes. Changing an organism's genotype may result in the addition of a desirable characteristic or the removal of an unwanted one, from the perspective of humans that is. There are four examples of genetic modification that you need to know about. The first is the insertion of human genes into bacteria to produce human proteins. As we learned in topic 21.1, bacteria contain tiny circular strands of DNA called plasmids, which can be cut open and human genes inserted. The modified bacteria then divide and grow, synthesizing the protein that the human gene codes for. If the DNA contains a gene that codes for a protein like insulin, the bacteria will synthesize insulin, which can then be extracted and used by humans. The second example that you need to know about is the insertion of genes into crop plants to confer resistance to herbicides. Some herbicides, which are chemicals used to kill weeds that compete with crop plants for resources, also harm the crops themselves. To get around this issue, a gene for an enzyme that breaks down the herbicides is inserted into crop plants like maize or corn and soy. This means that when the herbicides are used, the genetically modified plants are unaffected. The next example is the insertion of genes into crop plants to confer resistance to insect pests. So a certain bacterium produces a toxin that kills insects like caterpillars that damage crops and reduce yields. The gene for this toxin has been isolated and inserted into the DNA of plants like maize, cotton and soy. This makes the crops resistant to the pests and therefore eliminates the need for insecticides. Finally, genes are inserted into crop plants to improve nutritional qualities. A good example is golden rice, which is a variety of rice that's been genetically modified to produce a substance which is converted to vitamin A when metabolized by humans. Vitamin A is necessary for healthy vision and immune function, amongst other things, so golden rice could really benefit populations who don't already get enough of the vitamin in their diets. Other examples include wheat with a gene inserted to make it gluten-free and maize with a gene inserted to increase iron uptake. Okay, so that's everything you need to know for core, so we'll move on to the extended content. You need to be able to outline the process of genetic modification using bacterial production of a human protein like insulin as an example. Step 1. The DNA making up the human gene, in this case the gene for insulin, is isolated using restriction enzymes forming sticky ends. Step 2. The bacterial plasmid DNA is cut using the same restriction enzymes, forming complementary sticky ends. Sticky ends are short sections of unpaired bases. The human DNA and the bacterial DNA have complementary or matching sticky ends because they've both been cut by the same restriction enzymes. Step 3. The human DNA is inserted into the bacterial plasmid DNA using DNA ligase enzyme. The modified plasmid is referred to as a recombinant plasmid. Step 4. The recombinant plasmids containing the human gene are inserted into bacteria. The bacteria containing the recombinant plasmids then divide and multiply, expressing the human gene and making the human protein. The human protein, insulin, can then be extracted, purified and used as a medicine to treat people with diabetes. Finally, you need to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of genetically modifying crop plants like soy, maize and rice. Advantages. Reduced use of herbicides and pesticides. By, for example, inserting genes that make crops resistant to insect pests, farmers no longer need to spray the land with toxic chemicals, which is of course better for the environment and both cheaper and less time-consuming. 
Increased crop yield. Modified crops with a resistance to herbicides no longer need to compete with weeds for resources and space, increasing the rate of production. Likewise, farmers who grow pest-resistant crops no longer need to worry about losses due to pest damage. Enhanced nutritional content. Modified crops that increase the uptake of vitamins, minerals and proteins may help to address nutrient deficiencies. Drought and salinity tolerance. Crops can be modified to tolerate drought and high soil salinity or salt content, which allows for cultivation in regions with poor soil or water scarcity. Now onto some disadvantages. Risk of inserted genes being transferred to wild plants by pollination. For example, if weeds were to gain a gene conferring resistance to herbicides, it would render the herbicides ineffective. If a plant were to gain a resistance to a disease or insect pests, it might begin to dominate other wild species, upsetting the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Health concerns. Many people are concerned that genetically modified crops produce molecules that could be toxic to humans or cause allergic reactions. Loss of biodiversity. A small number of genetically modified crops dominate the market, making agriculture more vulnerable to environmental pressures. Previously, if one species were wiped out by a disease or drought, other varieties would survive. By comparison, over-reliance on a single genetically modified crop would leave farmers with no backup. Cost and control. Companies that develop genetically modified seeds may manipulate prices, meaning small farmers that have become reliant on the seeds could be unable to compete with big agricultural firms. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 21.3, genetic modification. Now this was the very last topic in the syllabus, so if you made it this far, great job. Teachers and students, if you're interested in purchasing the slides, once again you can find a link to my resource store in the description.